back before my mum died in 2004. I lived with her. We were never well off. In fact, quite the opposite. After my mum got pregnant with me, my dad left and it was just the two of us from then on. I was working at the age of 12, trying to help cover food and other bills as she struggled to keep us afloat, juggling two jobs and working up to 18 hours a day. No joke. I was raised on a trailer park in an old battered trailer that was left to my mum after her dad had died. I knew nothing other than this trailer and the only people I knew lived on the trailer park as well. Our park was our own little world, even hosting a makeshift convenience store. Except to go to work and school, me and Ma never really went to the city and as such, a lot of my time was spent reading as we didn't always have electricity. Our trailer was near the entrance to the park and the park itself, I found out recently, was built on old Native American land that was taken by the government during the US's attempts to assimilate the Native American populations. My mother never knew this and as I say, I only recently found this out but it could explain a lot of the activity. The activity that I am talking about was unexplained things that would happen in and around our trailer. It had happened for as long as I can remember and in my younger years I can recall myself believing it was normal. Things started off small from what I can remember and I believe they may have escalated once I began to look into it. All of my memories growing up as a kid include some motif of the paranormal. I was never scared of bumps in the night. I grew up with them and like I say, I grew up thinking this was the norm as my mum never said anything about it to me. After 13 years of hearing disembodied voices, items moving on their own and bumps, creaks and knocks, I finally found out that all this activity wasn't actually normal at all. One day during summer, I had invited one of my friends from school around to our trailer. He lived on the trailer park too and when he came round, we were playing with toy soldiers when he told me that his trailer was haunted. Because of what I'd grown up with and the movies I'd seen, I thought a haunting was full bodied apparitions and violent attacks. When he told me why his trailer was haunted, I was confused to hear that they matched up with the activity I had been experiencing for more than a decade. This got me interested in hauntings and I picked up a few books from the library in town when I went in to go to school. 13 year old me suddenly entered the realm of the undead and I digested information on ghosts, demons, possession and poltergeists which I did believe is what I was dealing with. Nowadays, I think it was much worse. In the fall of that same year, I had my same friend round who I'm not going to name at his request. We are still in contact with each other but he's moved away. When I said that, I wanted to attempt to contact the spirit through an Ouija board. I had read about them in the volumes I had acquired and hoped I'd be able to ask the spirit to leave. Fucking dumb idea. My friend agreed and I assembled the makeshift board on a piece of paper using some crayons. It looked shabby but I copied it from a picture in one of the books so at least I knew everything was in the right places and then we used a shot glass as the planchette. Being silly little kids, we were asking stupid questions. And I mean stupid questions like, when will I die and do ghosts poo? We were giggling like the immature little children we were. After a couple more minutes of these sorts of questions, me and my friend were really giddy when the planchette tugged us both over to the no. It tugged so hard that the paper the Ouija board was drawn on crumpled. I looked straight at my friend and started laughing. He laughed too and I told him not to do that again. His laugh turned into a look of horror. I... I thought you moved it, he said nervously. 
And I thought he was trying to get me with a double whammy and was about to say as much when the planchette shot out from under my hand and smashed against the trailer wall. As if that wasn't crazy enough, my friend's hand wasn't even touching our makeshift planchette. And I screamed and crumpled up the paper board and I was freaking out at what had just happened and didn't know what to do next when the bulb from the light above our heads burst, spraying tiny glass particles all over us. And I was too scared to move but forced myself to it, and I didn't want to get in trouble for the mess. My friend left with the colour in his face drained and after that, he very rarely came round much afterwards. The activity only worsened for me. I had recurring nightmares of being flayed alive and roasted over a spit by some unseen dark mass. It sounds cliche, but I would always be struggling to turn my head and right at the moment when I could, the moment when I was about to gaze at this torturer, I'd wake up panting. Creepy occurrences weren't just in my mind though. Physical activity increased tenfold with things like our trailer violently shaking in the middle of the night despite there being no winds. This would even wake my mom up who, on more than one occasion, believed it to be an earthquake, and things that had definitely been left in the trailer, such as dinnerware, would disappear and then appear days later outside in the dirt. Things progressed like this for years to come and during my mid-teens, I would see the shadow from my dreams whilst awake, and I would see it out of the corner of my eye and when I looked over, it would be gone. I doubted it at first and thought it was just my mind playing tricks, but I noticed that it would get closer. The closer it got, the louder it got too, emitting a deep, guttural gargle that would make my blood curdle. And I told my friend about this, but he told me since the Ouija board years ago, nothing extraordinary had happened to him. I was alone. This haunting became unbearable when I would wake up deep in the night to the sound of the gurgles. I would wake up to see two piercing white eyes staring at me from the end of my bed and a shadow that appeared liquid in nature. I would flick on my lamp and there would be nothing there. I put up with this until this shadowy demon was right next to me in my bed. I ended up telling my mum who never actually admitted to experiencing the same but her eyes and the fact that she actually believed me told me she had experienced similar. We bought sage and burnt it and my mum prayed frequently. She even bought a cross and hung it on the wall. And after this, the shadowy figure actually began falling further and further back until the activity went back to the same level as when I was a small child. I never did find out what the shadowy creature was, but even to this day, I still think I catch a glimpse of it out of the corner of my eye. I was 20 years old two years ago when me, my mum and my dad moved into a lovely old French style house in New Orleans. It was an expensive property but my dad was an investment banker before retirement and I helped out as I couldn't afford a place on my own. It didn't take long for all of us to realise the place was haunted. My mother and father were both sceptics but it's hard to ignore full bodied apparitions which we all saw. I remember the night it all came out. We had been living there about three weeks and I had been seeing full bodied apparitions. We were all sat at the dinner table and I decided to bring it up. I had done this before in previous homes and was always brushed off by my parents with the same old explanations like it being an old house. This time they didn't protest. There was a moment of awkward silence and then my mother admitted that she too had seen apparitions. My father choked momentarily on his food. He told us too that he had seen a young black woman walking around the lower levels in the kitchen and dining room. He said he once asked whom she was to which he got no reply and the translucent figure just continued to potter around the kitchen before walking through a wall and 
disappearing. My mother had claimed to see her too, working the ovens in the kitchen though the oven itself never physically moved or turned on. She had only ever seen this young woman, who we all believe was a slave, once. I had never seen her. And my mother had also said she saw a tall, skinny white man, dressed in formal evening attire. He looked posh by my mother's description, and she had seen him walking up the spiral staircase, lying in her and my father's bed in the master bedroom, and smoking a pipe in the study. She said he seemed like an angry man, but never felt in any danger with him. Me nor my father had seen the old man, and my mother suggested she could have been overreacting as these sightings were after the slave woman's sightings. Finally, there was the apparition I had seen. The apparition was that of a cat, and this was the only haunting at the house that we believed was truly intelligent. The cat would run away at the sight of us and disappear into thin air. It was a white wisp of a creature that seemed to be smoky and silky. It had a white trail that followed it and it floated like smoke. After this discussion at the dinner table, we all silently agreed to put up with the spirits. We never really spoke of them after this, especially my father who was straddling the line between ignorance and denial. After all, the ghosts weren't bothering us, so why would we bother them? A few other things happened to us before I moved out. I just want to clarify, I didn't move out because of the activity, but because I met my now husband. Anyway, one time, my mother told me of how she was baking a cake and had begun beating the eggs in a bowl. The phone rang and she left the room. She returned to see the slave woman, making the motions of whisking. My mother watched her for a good minute, she said, before the slave looked up with what my mum described as a look of pure dread before fading away in front of her. The most horrifying occurrence, and the only occurrence where any of the spirits actually interacted with each other, came one night in November. Me and my mother had been sat in one of the living rooms watching television when we both heard a heart-wrenching scream. We had no idea what it was and we had no guests and we ran to the bottom of the stairs near where we heard it. There, we were faced with the tall man who had his hands around the slave's neck. Despite knowing they were both dead, there was a rush of panic at the unfolding scene. The slave, terrified and gasping for air, the tall man, his face awash with pure anger, in one moment, he threw the slave down the stairs who silently bounced and crumpled and then dispersed like smoke before landing at our feet. Me and my mother gazed up the stairs, shocked, but the tall man had gone. I tried looking into the history of the house, but there had been no recorded murders there. Nevertheless, me and my mother believed that the tall man murdered the slave woman. I moved out two years after moving in and my mum and dad still live there to this day. They still tell me that they experience and see the ghosts and I have more stories of my own to tell if anyone is interested. I'd be happy to tell. I grew up in Japan and lived there until I was seven. We relocated to Great Britain and if I'm honest, I'm so glad we did. I want to share with you an experience that happened to me about a fortnight before we moved away. As a disclaimer, I'd always been scared of the dark and always thought our house was haunted. We lived in an old traditional Tsukiyazukuri style home in rural Japan. Growing up I'd always experienced odd things as a child but only usually bumps in the night. This night was different. I was trying to sleep but had trouble doing so like most nights when I glanced over at my bedroom door. We had traditional shoji doors and I remember seeing a shadow form out of the ground. Its silhouette appeared to be wearing tattered rags but hung around its withered, scrawny body. 
Suddenly, my door slid open. I put my covers up to my eyes and heard scraping across my wooden flooring. I sat still for what felt like years until I finally deemed it safe to lower my covers. Bad idea. This withered witch looking woman was stood at the end of my bed, pointing at me, her gaping rotten mouth a dark tunnel that consumed me. She was looking at me, though she had no eyes, just two bloody holes where eyes should have been. She began making this croaking noise and leaning further over my bed. I could smell the rot on her and honestly, I thought I was going to die. I clenched my eyes shut and probably, out of pure exhaustion, I fell to sleep. I awoke the next day to find nothing amiss. There was no one in my room and my door was shut, but when I went into my bathroom and looked in the mirror, I had a large scratch on my stomach that had gone black, as if it was old and infected. Thankfully, this scratch healed like a normal wound, but I have no idea how I could have gotten it other than the woman. This doesn't sound like the scariest story ever, but for a seven-year-old kid, it was truly terrifying and it has scarred me to this day. I never told my mum or dad about this, but I was never sorry to see the back of that house. It's not every day you're physically harmed by the things that go bump in the night. Hey guys, Brothers Jackson Videos here. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more. Um, next week is a Christmas Horror Stories video, just to get you in the festive mood. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this. Leave any comments or any ideas you've got for videos in the comments down below. Um, and apart from that, like I say, subscribe.